Today's liturgy on Palm Sunday commemorates the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem just as we ourselves are beginning our own entry into Holy Week. In Jesus' passage into Jerusalem, we really encounter two different groups which are responding to Jesus. On the one hand, there is the group which has been on pilgrimage with Jesus. In fact, we're told in the Gospel of Matthew before the account of his entry into Jerusalem that great crowds had been gathering with him along the way. And it's these same followers of Jesus who form his disciples and who are following him. They recognize him as the Messiah, and they are precisely the ones who are crying out in jubilation, Hosanna in the highest, and laying palms and branches before him as he enters the city. The second group of people are those who are already present in Jerusalem, presumably preparing for the feast of the Passover. In the Gospel of Matthew, it tells us that the city was quaking. The verb there literally means vibrations from an earthquake. And this group of people is there noticing the arrival of Jesus, seeing the acclamations that these pilgrims are making on the way, and are wondering what to make of it. And this is the same group of people then, different from the pilgrim people, who are going to be the ones ultimately calling for the crucifixion of Jesus. And so we have before us today two groups and two responses to the one question of who is Jesus Christ? What does he reveal to us? And are we interested in buying into what it is that the Lord Jesus reveals? To look at that more closely, it is important to understand Jesus' own pilgrimage of ascent into Jerusalem. The first part is to point out that Jesus is on a literal pilgrimage of ascent. Where he came from on the Sea of Galilee was about 690 feet below sea level, and Jerusalem on average is about 2,500 feet above sea level. So Jesus is on this steady climb heading in toward the city of God, Jerusalem, where he ultimately is going to ascend and manifest the heights of God's love for us. And ultimately, he's going to reveal to us what the power of God is all about. He's going to show us that in the economy of God, the winning play or the winning position is really this sacrificial, self-giving, humble love, as opposed to an economy of the world where might is right and domination is the winning play. And so Jesus then enters the city in a show of utter humility. According to the prophecy of Zechariah 9.9, which Jesus fulfills, he enters the city on a lowly animal, on a donkey, a beast of burden carrying the king of the universe. And Jesus manifests his total humility as we hear in the second reading to the Philippians. He humbled himself obediently accepting even death. And so though Jesus is all-powerful, he manifests ultimately that his power is not manifested by force, but ultimately by offering himself completely, even for the very adversaries who desire to put him to death. This is really what the power of God's love is all about, to be able to lay down one's life for the sake of others. Pope Benedict XVI, in speaking about this love of Jesus manifested on the cross, said, Only when someone values love more highly than life, that is, only where someone is ready to put life second to love, for the sake of love, can love be stronger and more than death. If it is to be more than death, it must first be more than mere life. Jesus' total love for men, which leads him to the cross, is perfected in total stepping over to the Father, and therein becomes stronger than death because in this it is at the same time total being held by him. This really is, I think, a beautiful description of the love that Jesus offers us in overcoming sin and death. And so Jesus' pilgrimage of ascent to Calvary is precisely a pilgrimage to reveal to us the love of God. But it also reveals that our own life is a pilgrimage 
that it too is intended to run through the cross toward the love of God. This is our journey with Jesus in discipleship of him toward eternal life. The fathers of the church pointed out a very interesting aspect of our human life when they said, the human being lives his existence at the point of intersection of two gravitational fields. On the one hand, we have the field of gravity that wants to draw us downward. And this is precisely the field of sin, selfishness, and egoism. It wants to pull us down and suck us toward a self-absorption. And this field of gravity ultimately is going to tend to destroy, that we'll literally in selfishness consume ourselves and die in sin. And it's precisely this field that we need to be freed from. The other field at the point of intersection is the gravitational field that is the love of God which draws us upward. In our response to the love of God manifested in Jesus, our desire then is to give our lives as a gift for others. And further, the sweetness and fulfillment that we feel when we are able to give our lives in love for others is a further sign of this gravity pulling us upward toward the love of God. And it's this gravitational field then that ascends toward the resurrection of Jesus and eternal communion with God. But to fully enter it, we need assistance to be freed from this field of selfishness pulling us down so that we can be lifted up. And this is precisely what Jesus Christ does for us on the cross. And this, my brothers and sisters, is really the choice that we are making with our lives. Are we going to choose the field which leads to selfishness, sin, and death? Or are we going to rise up in Jesus toward the field of God's love, which sweetly draws us forward toward eternal life? And so as we enter Holy Week, let us lift up our hearts in gratitude for the gift of Jesus on the cross. And let us ask God for the grace to always respond to his love by striving to be freed from the gravitational pull of sin and selfishness that wants to draw us downward, so that we can ascend upward toward the love of God revealed to us in the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen.